Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Good morning from Lahore, Pakistan. I am Dr. Javed Iqbal Kokar, Professor of Forensic Medicine and Toxicology. As I started discussion on the asphyxia and this is the second lecture on this topic. And the learning objective of this lecture will be that I will be revising what are various classification of asphyxia and we will move on to the mechanical asphyxia which for which we are mainly concerned with. And it is basically occlusion from either outside or from inside. When we talk about the occlusion from outside, it is either at the level of respiratory orifices or at the level of neck or at the level of chest. And when we talk about the occlusion at the respiratory orifices, it is either smoothering or overlaying. Then at the level of neck, it may be hanging or strangulation. And other objective will be that at the level of chest, it is either stampede or traumatic asphyxia. Then I will also be discussing the anatomy of neck because what are the basic important structures in the neck which are responsible for the cause of death when they are interfered with. Then mechanism of fracture of hyoid bone. It is important to know what are basic mechanisms which cause fracture of hyoid bone. Then I will be discussing suffocation and smoothing in detail and overlaying. Then I will also be discussing other means of obstruction like gagging, choking and burking. Then I will also be discussing the Hemlich maneuver which is to prevent the inhale objects to get them out. Then I will be discussing gagging, cafe coronary, entrapment and most important the positional asphyxia which may be either the hog type position or a ball type position. So starting with the lecture classification of asphyxia. The types of asphyxia they are either mechanical asphyxia for which we are forensic people more mostly concerned with pathological asphyxia because of disease, toxicological asphyxia, environmental asphyxia and iatrogenic asphyxia. <clears throat> so starting with the mechanical asphyxia, mechanical asphyxia can be classified depending upon the level of obstruction into either it is occlusion from outside or it is occlusion from within. When it is occlusion from outside, it may be obstruction at the respiratory orifices level that is the nose and the mouth that is suffocation. And they are of two types, the smoothing and overlaying. Then obstruction at the level of neck that is by means of hanging or strangulation. An obstruction at the level of chest that is stampede or traumatic asphyxia. Then I will also be discussing in further lecture the special type which is the autoerotic asphyxia. So starting with occlusion from within, it is gagging and choking and drowning. Drowning is also a form of asphyxial death where air is replaced by water. So drowning is also occlusion from within. Then obstruction at the level of neck can further be subdivided into hanging, ligature strangulation, manual throttling and ligature strangulation can be either by garroting, throttling, mugging and banstola. So these types we will be discussing in further lectures but just a uh, brief introduction and classification. It's This is mugging that is the compression of neck within the arm and this is bans dola that is constriction of neck between two sticks. So these uh, things I will be discussing in the next lecture but just mentioning here now this is uh, a brief chart of all the types of the asphyxial deaths. 
Now talking about the anatomy of neck, the compression of neck whether partial or complete, it obstructs blood flow as well as breathing. Pressure on carotid sinus and vagus nerve may precipitate reflex cardiac arrest and obstruction to the venous return from the head causes congestion and hemorrhages in the tissues above the level of constriction. And this is a, another diagram which is showing the structure in the middle is the hyoid bone and thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage and trachea. On the sides there is common carotid artery and it is bifurcating into internal and external carotid and on outer side there is internal jugular vein. And this is the side view, in the front we can see the uh, root of the tongue, the hyoid bone, the thyroid cartilage and the laryngeal air space in which the air is passing. And on posterior side the carotid artery, the vagus nerve and jugular veins are. So these are important structures which are placed in the neck which are responsible for various uh, symptoms and signs. The obstruction to the arterial supply through the carotid artery to the head causes anoxia to the brain and partial blood flow continues through the vertebral vessels which are within the vertebral foramen. Obstruction of the windpipe causes generalized oxygen deficiency and sufficient pressure is required to stop the air flow in the stiff rigid cartilages of trachea and larynx. Usually larynx is lifted up so that the base of the tongue which is pushed backward, the tongue blocks the back of the throat. Now what will be the effect of pressure on the neck? If the carotid sinus is pressed, vagus nerve will be stimulated and it will be causing cardiac arrest. If the jugular veins are blocked and only 2 kg's weight is required, it will cause congestion and hemorrhage. Then carotid artery blockage, it needs only 5 kg's and it will cause unconsciousness because blood supply to the brain will be blocked. Then airway blockage needs 15 kg of weight and it causes oxygen lag. Then to block the vertebral arteries 30 kg is required which completely blocks the arterial supply to the brain. Now how much tension is required to occlude various structures in the neck? For jugular veins 2 kg which is uh, equal to 4.4 pounds. Then carotid arteries about 5 kg which is 11 pounds. Trachea about 15 kg which is 33 pounds, vertebral arteries 30 kg which is approximately 66 pounds of pressure. So this much pressure is required to occlude various structures in the neck. In the least tension or least pressure which is required to block the structure is 5 to 10 kg. So how small is the weight to occlude the structure and to maximum tension which occlude all the neck structure that is 20 to 40 kg. Now starting with the fracture of the hyoid bone. So this is the hyoid bone diagrammatically which is shown placed at the base of the tongue. There is a body in the center and lesser cornu and greater cornu. The fracture of hyoid bone, it occurs by two mechanisms. The first mechanism in the throttling that is direct lateral compression and second the indirect violence by upward and outward pull in hanging. So you can see in throttling there is compression inward and the fractured segment is being displaced inwards whereas in hanging as there is upward and backward pull and the fractured 
segment has been displaced outward. So from direct lateral compression this happens in manual strangulation. When we manually constrict the neck, the fingers and the thumb they are compressing medially and they are directly compressing the fracture segment inwards and this is hanging from indirect violence by upward and backward pull on the limbs of the hide bone, the greater cornu, and which is pushed outwards and fractured segment is displaced outwards in hanging. So in manual strangulation there is lateral compression and the fracture end will be displaced inward. In hanging there is backward pressure from front Hence, the fractured ends will be displaced outwards. The fracture of hide bone and laryngeal cartilages occur only in elderly people because before the age of 40 it is cartilaginous and it is showing fracture only after the age of 40 when they are ossified. So this is a picture of completely ossified hide bone. This is another picture and this is uh, a picture of the fracture of greater cornu and this is a diagram at showing the fractured end and this is a showing the inward compression of and this is another uh, diagrammatic representation that is in hanging the fractured segment is displaced inwards and this is at a top C the bone is recovered. Now starting with the first asphyxial death that is suffocation. These are various photographs. The plastic bag has been applied and the mouth has been closed. So this is suffocation. And suffocation blocks the entry of air through the air passages. Normal airway, the air is going in and out and in obstruction it is blocked. So suffocation is defined as the mechanical obstruction to the passage of air into the respiratory tract by means of, by means other than the constriction of the neck and drowning. And it is the purest form of asphyxia and it results in a fairly rapid manner which causes painless loss of consciousness followed by death. And its types, they are of two types, smoothering and overlaying. There are some other methods of occlusion from outside like gagging, choking and burking. We will discuss also them. Now smoothing, it is the closing of air passages externally either by hands or by a soft material and in overlaying it occurs in small children overlaying by some other person, mother while feeding or sleeping by someone else. So the occurrence it is usually accidental it may be suicidal, it cannot be suicidal but these are the manner accidental, suicidal and homicidal. Accidental, this is the most common in overlaying hot deaths in infants due to prone position and burial of their face in the soft pillow or children playing with plastic bags and covering their face and the mouth and the nose they are blocked and similarly in epileptics when they fall prone they bury their uh, nose and mouth in the pillow and get suffocated. Then suicidal is uncommon and homicidal can only be possible in feeble or intoxicated persons. So mechanism of death, it is either hypoxic, hypoxia or anoxic, anoxia. Hypoxic, hypoxia mean partial occlusion. Anoxic anoxia mean complete occlusion. So smoothing. Smoothing is form of asphyxia 
caused by mechanical occlusion of external air passages like the nose and the mouth by means of hand, cloth, plastic bag or any other material. At autopsy, there will be specific pathological findings. In homicidal smoothing, the abrasion, bruises are generally seen in the region of mouth and nose because that is the area which is being occluded by means of hand or other material and they will call abrasion and bruises. They may be absent if the soft material like cloth has been used. Injuries on the inside of lips from the pressure of the teeth, bruising of the gums will be there. So you have, you should always see the inside of lips and the gums for these injuries. Then these injuries may be missed at autopsy, so you never should miss them. Always examine the inside of lips and the gums. So this is a picture of a child showing the bruises and abrasions around upper lip, lower lip and the chin. As these injuries they are produced as a result of struggling, therefore they may be absent in infants, young children and the aged and debilitated person because they cannot struggle. The air passages often contain blood change fluid. Now about the non-pathological asphyxial finding which we have discussed in the previous lecture. They are cyanosis, congestion, reticular hemorrhages. They will be found in the skin and internal viscera. These are the particular hemorrhages. Now the smoothing by plastic bags, this is rising in number because these days the plastic bags are abundantly used. The incidence of accidental obstruction of air waste by plastic bag has been increased recently. The moisture seals the respiratory orifices by the plastic. Plastic clings, it sticks to the orifices. And this material contains a glue-like substance which can be detected in the blood and the liver. So the medical legal aspects of these smoothing is mostly accidental and it may occur in alcoholics who roll over and bury their face in the pillow while in bed. Similarly, the epileptics may also bury their face during the fit into some suffocating material, pillow or other material. Then at birth, the newborn may die from smoothing if it is born with the membranes covering the nose and the mouth and they are called call birth. Similarly, the alcoholics they roll over and bury their face in the pillow while in the bed. Now overlaying. Overlaying is accidental smoothing of a child due to mother or any other person rolling over it during sleep, thereby asphyxiating it. It occurs sometimes when the inexperienced girl mother presses the child too closely to the breast while feeding the baby. Homicide smoothing may be committed by closing the mouth and the nostril with the hands. It may also be committed with pillow or clothing. It is common method of infanticide. Homicide smoothing of adults is difficult unless they are weak or stupefied by drugs or they are diseased. No burking. It's a very peculiar phenomena shown by two individuals. This is a form of asphyxia which was invented by two murderers, Brooke and Hare. These are the two persons, Brooke and Hare. And they used to kill their victims and sell their bodies for dissection to Edinburgh Medical School. They are the individual and this is the 
picture diagrammatic representation showing the kidney buruk used to sit on the chest of inebriated or uh, alcoholic victim usually the hair used to cover with one hand the mouth and the nostril and pushing the jaw with the other hand so it's a combination that is smoothing and pushing the tongue to the back of the throat and sometimes they used to drag the victim like wheelbarrow holding his feet mimic mimicking a road traffic accident so this method is a mixed example of smoothing and traumatic asphyxia because one person used to sit on the chest which was unable to move causing traumatic asphyxia and with one hand closing the mouth and nose and with the other hand pushing the tongue base of the tongue against the posterior pharyngeal wall so it's a method of mixed example of smoothing and traumatic asphyxia now internal respiratory occlusion these are other asphyxiating techniques there are two types choking and gagging choking choking is a form of asphyxia caused by mechanical occlusion within the air passages by some solid object the object excites violent coughing but if this is unsuccessful in expelling the object choking results the size of the object is not important this is the most important thing that the size of the object is not important now i will be discussing the hemlich maneuver we should know that that how we should avoid we can save a person if he has swallowed some object in children keep the children prone head down and pat the chest and upper uh, chest and the neck so that the child may cough out and the other technique is that you get on the back of the individual make a fist with one hand and with the other hand you hold the fist and chest lower chest is compressed you press the lower chest of that individual forcefully like this the breast bone it is pressed and the person may vomit out the ingested material object even an object which is smaller in size than the lumen of the respiratory passages it will cause asphyxia because it may bring about reflex spasm of the vocal cords with fatal consequences a very small object which is smaller than the lumen it can excite the vocal cord spasm and it will not be released and person will get asphyxiated so this is a picture showing the uh, epileptics the epileptic if lying supine face upward the tongue will fall back against the posterior pharyngeal wall during an attack of epilepsy and may choke so the cause of death is asphyxia or vagal inhibition or laryngeal spasm so these are the causes of death in choking now gagging gagging is a mean to effect choking by prevention of air entry through the mouth and nose gagging means something is gagged these respiratory passages are open and respiration is going on but you can see the base of the tongue is falling back occluding the respiratory passage and some object if pushed will block that airway and this is a gag the gag commonly used is handkerchief or a piece of cloth which is stuffed tightly into the mouth it is not only fills the mouth 
but also obstructs breathing through the back of the throat because the tongue is pushed backwards. When the gag is packed, choking occurs as soon as the saliva, the mucus and the edematous fluid moistens the cloth and it will obstruct the cloth pores. So it will now completely block the air entry. So autopsy appearance will be that if it is epileptic, the tongue should be especially examined for the position and the presence of bruising. It, there may be bite marks before the resection of the neck and removal of viscera should be examined. In most epileptics choking, there is history of it, tongue bite and the position of tongue is important. Now in choking due to foreign body, in addition to asphyxial findings, the object which is responsible for choking is found in the respiratory passages. So you can see uh, this is also a Hemlich maneuver that the mother is uh, pressing the chest while the head is down or compressing the chest from back so that the if the child has swallowed some object he may cough it out. Now regarding the medical legal aspects the death from choking is always accidental and this is a impaction of food, fish bone or denture. In the x-ray it is seen a denture is impacted and on uh, esophagoscopy this is removed. And this is another picture showing various other foreign objects which are impacted in the respiratory passages. In alcoholics the vomited material may be inhaled. An impaction of object like marble, coin, pea may occur in children. They will put everything in mouth with which they are playing. And this is a picture showing a coin, impacted object, coin in the neck, uh, front view, lateral view and a buckle of a belt which was impacted and swallowed by the child and was removed. So regarding the homicidal choking, it is usually confined to the cases of infanticide where all sorts of foreign material or articles they are introduced into the infant's ear passages. Suicide choking is rare, gagging is always homicidal and it should be kept in mind gag is some material which is stuffed into the mouth and that is always homicidal. Now the cafe coronary. Cafe coronary as the word is telling cafe means cafe and coronary means coronary attack. So it looks like a coronary attack in a cafe. Cafe coronary is a condition of accidental choking. It's not a cardiac or heart attack. Cafe coronary is a condition of accidental choking where a bolus of food produces a complete obstruction of the larynx. The victim of such accident may slump over the dining table with little or no cry. He cannot utter a word. He will mimic on the table. And it is so called because it mimics like a heart attack. It looks like that heart attack has happened. That is why it's called as cafe coronary. And it occurs commonly when the gag reflex is suppressed in alcoholics and in intoxicated individuals. Death is due to reflex cardiac arrest consequent upon stimulation of laryngeal nerve. There will be intense wiggle spasm also, uh, vocal cord spasm also or reflex cardiac arrest. So this is a diagram showing the impacted material within the respiratory tract. Autopsy reveals a bolus of food which is impacted in the larynx. This is another autopsy picture showing the, this is the impacted bolus. This is a meat 
piece of meat which was removed. Now entrapment. When the person is entrapped in a closed environment, initially the oxygen is available but later on because of reduction in the oxygen it will lead to asphyxia. Entrapment of a child in the refrigerator, in a wooden boxer or a cupboard is common because they, when they play hide and seek, they try to hide and get entrapped. Now, positional asphyxia. The word is telling that because of some awkward position, the respiratory movement is not possible and the person get asphyxiated. These are other positions diagrammatically shown. And this is a picture uh, diagram showing when the head of the child is upright, the air passage is straight open and when the head is bent backward, you can see there is kinking and the airway is blocked. Similarly, when the head of the child is bent forward because the trachea of the child is soft and it is easily compressed while the adults they have rigid trachea and it is not easily possible to compress by this movement. But the children by this movement forceful uh, hyperextension or hyperplexion will cause kinking of the trachea and blocking of the airways. Now hog tie bondage. This is a special type of positional asphyxia. Hog tie bondage is tying up all the four limbs together behind a person's back and it typically involves connecting a person's wrists and ankles behind their back while lying the face downward using some form of asphyxial restraints. And this is an other atypical position of hog tie. Sometimes a different position can be implied with other asphyxial restraints. Now the ball tie. As the word is telling that the ball tie is a bondage position in which a person is bound tightly into a ball position. And the ball position is also called as fetal position where the legs are bent double and the hands they are pressed against the bottom. The legs are also brought up so that the thighs are pressed against the chest and abdomen which restrains the breathing. Thank you very much. Take care. This was all about the second lecture. We will conti I will continue the next topics in the next lecture. Allah Hafiz. Bye bye. Please subscribe to my channel. And this is my channel name. Dr. Javed Iqbal Kokhar. Lectures on Forensic Medicine.